It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. But you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Visez au CBC, presented by Les Championnats du Sport à Radio-Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada. The Government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U-Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U-Sports. Welcome inside the Mattamy Athletic Center. It's day two of the University Men's Hockey Championship on CBC. Curtis Coleman here alongside Matthew Smith to bring you this quarterfinal matchup between the Patriots of Université de Quebec at Trois-Rivières and the Aigle Bleu of Moncton. The two versus seven matchup and UQTR is the two seed for a reason. They're very experienced here. Absolutely, Curtis. It was only last week where they defeated the TMU Bold on this ice to win their third straight Queen's Cup championship, certifying them as a dynasty. They won the Nationals back in 2022, and now they're looking to add some hardware into their trophy case. This is a high-power offense. First in the OUA, averaging 4.32 goals a game, backed up by some great goaltending by Alexi Gravel, 935 save percentage, former Chicago Blackhawks draft pick in 2018. And on the other end, it's Moncton, only two games over 500. However, they turned a page now since the playoffs have started in the AUS, making it to the finals, facing UMB, the team that that dominated Brock, they only lost by two goals in each of those two games. So it would be a huge upset if Moncton could pull this off, and they're going to have to rely on a lot of their leadership and young stars to do so. Yeah, and speaking of UNB crushing Brock, as you put it, we take a look at how the brackets played out already. We've seen half the quarterfinal matchups. UNB, a great win over Brock, dominant fashion, and the TMU Bold, a nail-biting Two to one, double overtime victory. Hopefully we see some great matchups again today. Well, hopefully we don't go to double OT. I appreciate that. But on the other end, we got UBC and McGill playing tonight to find out who will play the winner between the Patriots and the Egla Blurs. So it's definitely some interesting matchups, and I'm just excited to get going. Absolutely. As we take a look at how these two teams have stacked up over the season, what their stats look like. Moncton squeaking into the playoffs as the two seed, and... Uh, they won their first, as you mentioned, they did really well in the playoffs. Yeah, they went all the way to the finals. Only lost like uh, by two, like I said, to UMB in each game. But look at the power play difference. 25% for the Patriot. A very high power offense. Dangerous on the power play. And only 15.5% for Mugnet. However... UQTR light, uh, does take penalties. Just like Brock, we were mentioning yesterday, if you get the opportunity, you got to make sure you capitalize on this because they have a negative nine goal differential in the regular season, meaning that UQTR is probably the, probably the better team five on five. So if you end up getting the power play, make sure you capitalize. Yeah, it will certainly be interesting. And you mentioned the power play, how strong both these teams have been. You've also mentioned how Moncton seemed to step up a bit in the playoffs. As we take a look now at one of those players who has stepped up on both the power play and in the playoffs, Olivier Luc Ache. Oh yeah, Olivier Luc Ache, 16 points in the regular season, a great season for him. But look what he's done so far in the playoffs. Three goals and two assists in five games, a point-per-game player. You know, he's not even the top scorer on the team, but it's great when secondary scoring can show up in the playoffs. It's a huge difference maker for your team. And on the other side, La France, 
Uh, 45 points in the regular season, good for fourth best in the country, and he has been a star for this UQTR Patria team. And look for him and his line to get the offense going. Yeah, we will certainly be on the lookout for them. Among all the players in this matchup, we'll see who steps up on the biggest stage. We, as we will be right back with you. You're watching U Sports on CBC. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visite le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Et maintenant, s'il vous plaît, tournez votre attention au centre de la patinoire et accueillons Brian Burke pour la mise au jeu. Welcome back to the Matami Athletic Center in the U Sports Men's Hockey Championships in 2024. Brian Burke performing the ceremonial face-off part of the WHL executive groups. And uh, 
What else to say about Brian Burke, you know, former GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs, notorious for trading up and drafting the Sedin brothers together. He is one of the most recognizable faces in hockey and a great person, great knowledge. I'm excited to, to be here. I'm excited he's here. David, David Noel taking the ceremonial face-off with Mika Sear. And getting into this one, what do you expect to see, Matt? Well, listen, UQTR, not the biggest team, yet they play like it. Such a physical team, and hopefully Munkin can answer the bell. UQTR, you know, five on five. People would say they are the much better team, but it's going to be up to Moncton. Like I said, they turned the page in the playoffs. This is a new team. Their goaltender has been playing way better. The lines have been playing better. Second place in the AUS facing off against the Queen Cup champions. This should be a good one. Absolutely. The opening face-off, Remy Engelhart taking it against Samuel L'Italien. And we are underway in the third quarterfinals at the 2024 University Cup. It's won by the Patriot. And Kalen Gauthier starts with the dump and chase. Felix LaFrance sends it in front. It's poke checked away. And the Aigle Bleu get it. A long pass attempt misses everyone. That'll be an icing call. Intended target was Anglehart. Yeah, Anglehart trying to get past the defenseman. If he could have gone in a tape, it would have been a one-on-one -on -one break to the UQTR goaltender, Gravel. Would have been a good chance, just missed it. So it's icing back in the other end. Offensive zone face-off. It's going to be Connor Frenette, who was the star of the Queen's Cup Finals. Had a goal and an assist in the victory and their leading playoff point scorer. And we all know about LaFrance and how good he is, but it makes this team so dangerous when guys like Frenette step up in the most important times. For sure. The Aigle Bleu have it behind their own net. Jan-Felix Lapointe. Long stretch pass attempted. Knocked to the side by Ache. Fighting for it. Simon LaFrance has it. LaFrance down the right wing. LaFrance waits, waits. Centering pass, the front scores! A one-timer right away. Beautiful patience from LaFrance, and it's finished off by Baudouin. Charles Baudouin to make it 1 0 for the Patriot. Great vision by Simon LaFrance. He had a bunch of time, waited near the faceoff dot, looked for his teammates, and saw Baudouin. And Baudouin scored on the one timer. Uh, if you're Moncton, you got to make sure guys who are in front of the slot in those grade A scoring opportunities, you got to make sure you're defending them and you know your assignments in front of the net. We saw with the Brock and UMB game early on, a goal was scored in a similar way because the slot wasn't covered up. Yeah, just under a minute in, and the Patriot already have the lead. Felix Lozon, he's trying to make it two in the near corner. Baudouin on the season had eight goals and three points in the playoffs. That's a big time to score number nine. Was a champion with Shawinigan in the QMJHL in 2022 and a first year. So he's someone who hasn't really, or who is experienced, but hasn't experienced that glory that the rest of maybe the Patriots have. Absolutely. As we take a look at the replay of Baudouin's goal, just Nothing the goaltender Adam could do there. A perfect one-timer shot, and that's going to go in every time. But he's able to put himself in the position to be effective, and that's what makes him dangerous. It's dumped in by Gilbo. They're able to move the puck out of the zone. And now William Basque. Centering attempt. Defense. Bounced off a stick and is caught by Alexi Gravel. He's going to hang on. What else is there to say about Alexi Gravel? I mean, a 935 save percentage in the regular season. A former Blackhawks pick back in 2018. And he's been one of the best player for the, players for this UQTR team. I mean, like we saw with Connor Unger, like we saw with Richard from UMB. It's great to score all these goals, but when it comes down to crunch time, you got to rely on your goalie. And when they're stepping up, there's a good chance of winning the hockey game. Yeah, Gravel certainly has stepped up in the last two Q Queen's Cup finals. They've gone to combined 
five overtimes, and they've managed to win both. Gravel, the MVP of the tournament in 2022, when the Patriot won it all. Here's Felix LaFrance. His shot misses high and wide. Engelhardt starts the other way. Down the right side, bounce off a ref skate, and angle right back to Engelhardt. Lucky bounce there. Engelhardt shot turned aside right in the belly of Gravel. Well, you mentioned those overtime games that they play. Well, look what happened yesterday night when it was a double OT between TMU and the Calgary Dinos. I mean, the goaltenders were the best players in those two periods of overtime. And, you know, you just hope your goalie can save every shot when fatigue sets in for the players. Yeah, that's what both teams are hoping. Obviously, it's not possible for Adam anymore, but he has played, as we mentioned, so much better in the playoffs than the regular season, really stepping up. Yeah, I mean, he had an 897 save percentage in the playoffs, and that skyrocketed right into the 900s. Or, sorry, in the regular season, that skyrocketed into the playoffs. I believe the 930s it reached. Exactly. So, you know, when your, play, when your goalie's hot like that, you're going to win games, absolutely, even if you're not scoring. You can win it 1-0, 2-1. It's a luxury. Nathalie Roy. Pass down low. Hache. Mercier tries getting it through. That's blocked and tips wide. Roy tries to keep it in, and he does. Passes it on the near side, and it's lifted into the air by Sear. I think he was trying to do a... I, I think he was trying to pass it to the other side, but it was just way off in the direction. Yeah, I mean, you're going to try those wild passes if you see a teammate far on the other side of the ice. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Diego Bleu trying to attack still. Boudreaux behind the net. A few players fighting for it. Maverick Gauthier had an assist on the, U on the Queen's Cup winning goal. He pins Boudreaux into the boards. Behind his own net, waiting. Yeah, Gauthier seemingly got injured in that Queen's Cup finals, but it's good to see him back here playing in the Nationals. Anthony Monroe Boucher deflects the clear, but now Moncton has a chance. Pelletier tries starting things. Basque just dumps it in. Grevel plays it with urgency because he saw a player approaching. It's a nearly a bad turnover in front. They're Gravel's able to poke check it away. Now Baudouin down the left wing. He turns, drop pass, waiting. Rafa Mazan so shot, stop, loose puck, misses wide. That's funny to see Adam getting called there for high stick, making the save. You don't see that often, goaltender getting called for the high stick. You do not, as it's cleared away. Late icing, Rafa Nomazansoa gets it. He was another player who got injured in the Queen's Cup Finals. Luckily for him and his team, they scored almost immediately after. Well, that's relieving. So certainly, when you go down an injury, you don't want to be out. Oh, they were down two defensemen at that point. So very miraculous effort by the Patriot in order to win the Queen's Cup for the third straight year. And now looking to medal for the third straight year at the U-Cup. I mean, they, they, they've experienced adversity. They were down late to that TMU team by one goal with only around six minutes left. They were able to tie it and then win in double overtime. That's a team win right there. Felix LaFrance, his pass tipped away by LaPointe. Jeremy LaPointe. And now rookie team member, and it's a score goal! Kalen Gauthier makes it 2 nothing after a turnover in front. What a snipe by Gauthier, and what a pass that was by LaFrance from the back side. He did a spin, or a, look at, we take a look at the replay. Backhand pass, has eyes behind his head, and he saw his defenseman creeping up getting passed into the slot area and was able to get that over the glove of Adam. Well, four shots, two goals already for the Patriot. And Kalen Gauthier, just his second total goal of the season, was captain of Sherbrooke in the QMJHL and played 192 games there. We've mentioned this before in the Queen's Cup final, but I guess that didn't make the air. This is basically an all-star QMJHL team. <laughs> Yes, a lot of players from the QNHL, right? Quebec, no, not a lot of teams. Gravel makes a couple big saves. Sear gets it in the near corner, fights with the puck for a little bit. Not a lot of Quebec teams, so, you know, a lot of those stars in the QMJHL are going to find themselves here at UQTR. 
UQGR has embraced them and really, if you just look at the history, captains and assistants are plenty on this, plentiful on this roster. So they have no shortage of intangibles on this team and leadership. Kellen Gauthier waiting behind the net. Maybe he's waiting for his name, his golden to be announced. Getting fired up, but for Moncton, those two goals are just missed assignments. The first one-timer, and then nobody watching their point man. Anthony Monroe Boucher, a wraparound save made by Adam. He tries again. That one took a deflection and missed wide. Another save by Adam in tight. That was Mule Ouellette, who scored the overtime winner in the Queen's Cup Championship. I like the pace of play for Moncton, Moncton right now. You know, they're playing physical, they're dumping and chasing, making it hard on defenders to try and clear their zone. Unfortunately, like I just said, just a couple of missed assignments and they're down a couple. Pass ahead for net. Sends it behind the net, Felix LaFrance. Mercier right on him, taking the body over the puck. Hoping a teammate comes by. LaFrance manages to deke around him. Cuts back the other way again. Making Mercier look a little silly. LaFrance tries getting it to net, but finally Mercier was there. And in front was Simon LaFrance. But uh, he couldn't get a shot off. Yeah, and it goes to show how Felix LaFrance, how strong he is on the puck. He wasn't allowing Mercier to take the puck away from him, standing his own ground in the corner. Peltier was able to get it out. Baudouin, his pass deflected behind the net. Baudouin gets it back on the near boards. Passes it to Martin. Martin. Lozon takes it out of the near corner. Looking for Gauthier. Doesn't get to him. And it trickles down the ice. Michelle in a race with it against Rafinoma Zansoa. Rafinoma Zansoa wins that race, and he comes away with the puck. He's on the near boards. Hit from behind. He's getting in a bit of a scrum with LaPointe. Turnover. Shot attempt blocked. LaPointe just dumps that one in. Jan Felix LaPointe, that is. Dion. LaPointe. His pass. Shot from a bad angle, turned aside. It was Ashe from around the top of the faceoff circle. This is a great start to the hockey game. Almost halfway through, both teams getting their chances. Pace of play is back and forth. And it's a, it's a good change from yesterday's game we covered. Unfortunately, first period, unfortunately for Brock, we're hemmed in their own zone. A little different this time around. Yeah, but the score is the same. It is. You're right. You mentioned yesterday, it doesn't matter if you win 6 nothing or 4-2. Uh, to two. Win's a win. Absolutely. Sear. Hache. Noel takes the puck on hard. They start the other way. Dumoulin. Cornway. Leaves it for DeMoulin. DeMoulin right in the faceoff circle. His shot stopped. Whose puck swatted away by LaPointe. Vitalien gets it back. Approaches the faceoff circle. Centering pass in front. DeMoulin regroups. His shot blocked. Vitalien drops it behind. Into the near corner. Pierre-Olivier Roy lost it. Ache. Dion. Gauthier sends it behind the net. In front, panning on the shot. This is a great shift by Hua. When they entered the zone originally, he rushed to the net, making sure a defender was following him, which gave LaPointe that shot uncontested to shoot on Adam. Clearance by Vieg Le Bleu. Toner gets hit after he is able to get it out. It's Mercier. Able to clear the zone. Toner. Rings it around the boards. Drouin. His pass. 
He was looking for Toner, but I think he was out of it by then. Yeah, he wasn't sure if Toner, he thought he was going with him. That's the reason why the pass was so missed. And just caught looking there. Cross-ice pass, Cornway a shot, glove saved by Adam. Good oh, It's a stop. great save by Adam. You know, you got to make sure this guy can see these pucks, make sure there's no traffic in front of him. Well, we are going to take a quick break. Stick around. It's 2-0 UQTR. You're watching U Sports on CBC. Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports women's hockey team at the face off in the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Presented by Connect Energy in Saskatoon. The action began yesterday and continues tonight on CBC Gem, CBC Sports, CBC, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. Yeah, and at the stoppage of play, at the commercial break, Derek Cormier talking to his players on the bench, probably relaying the message. I'm liking the pace of play, guys, but we just got to make sure we are checked up on our assignments, defending well in front of our net, and giving our goaltender a chance to make a save. Yeah, UQTR now out shooting him 7-4, to four, so Adam has had a bit more of a workload. There's a turnover, Bo Dwayne gets it in front, his shot just misses high and wide. Couture, find his own net. Knocked down by Frenette. Able to clear was Peltier. Killing Gautier. Chased by LaPointe. Hit as he rings it around. Dion. This is a relentless forecheck by UQTR. So if you're a Moncton defenseman, you got to make sure that you get that puck out of it. And if you're a winger on Moncton, you got to make sure you're open for the pass. Can't get stuck in your own zone for too long. Here's a, here's a rush. LaFrance shoots, scores! Simon LaFrance! What a game he's having! Simon LaFrance, I mean, a, he's a superstar for a reason. 45 points in the regular season, continuing into the playoffs. Big playoff success, and there you go. He snipes one on Adam Far's side. A beautiful shot, and he puts UQTR up by three. His third point in the opening 12 minutes... LaFrance was pretty quiet in the finals, but he has made his mark once again on the U Sports world. He led the nation in goals this season, and now he's probably leading the tournament in points. Well, we take a look at that replay, a perfect shot just over the blocker side of Adam. Probably was watching the program, so we picked him as player to watch, made sure he had to deliver. Deliver he has, a goal to assist so far, Seer. Shot, save made by Gravel. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Check the gold, check, catch the gold medal game of this 2024 University Cup live from Toronto Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. And that's exactly what the Patriot are doing right now. Absolutely. I mean, it's a tough start for the game for Adam. First goal, couldn't do anything about it. Second goal, a missed assignment. The third goal, obviously, he would love to have back. Unfortunately, LaFrance, a powerful shot. 
He's going to have to stand on his head the rest of the game if Moncton has a chance to get back into it. Roulette. The offensive zone, Lausanne. Drops for Gauthier. Gauthier sends it through. That's blocked. Loose puck. Monroe Boucher nearly had a chance. Monroe Boucher tries centering it. It's kept in. Gauthier. Sends it behind the net. Willette. Lozon. Sends it behind again. Now it's Monroe Boucher. He gets tied up by Dion, Jacob Dion. And he's able to clear the zone after that. Maverick Gauthier now trying to start from his own end. Seven minutes to go in the opening frame. Three nothing. It's been the Simon La France show here at the Manami Athletic Center. Long pass and just dumped in by Ludovic Susi. Long pass the other way. Drouin dumps and chases. Gravel will come out to play it. Play it off the boards. Boudreaux tries shooting it. That doesn't get through. Mercier at the point. His shot misses wide. Toner trying to keep it in. He does. Chips that into the air. Boudreaux from the right faceoff circle. Stick handles it with it. Boudreaux still stick handling. Drops it for Mercier. Mercier's got a lane. His shot pad saved by Gravel. And he angles that into the crowd of UQTR bodies. Yeah, good decision by Mercier. You're down three. You want to keep things simple. Just get pucks to that. Hope your wingers can get there for screen or potential rebound goal. Unfortunately for him, they thought the same way. There's a turnover. A shot attempt doesn't get through from William Basque. Basque. Pass it off to Peltier. Arsenault. Alexi Arsenault. Long shot. Gloved down by Gravel. And he'll cover. Well, for Moncton, you got to make sure any offensive zone possession. You got to make sure you win the face-off and the face-off dot. You got to get pucks to the net right now. Only down three in the first period. It's a, it's a tough pill to swallow so far. So win the face-off, get shots on net, cycle the puck around, and you can get things going. Cornoyer, a pass to Simon LaFrance. Got to have a man on him at all times at this point. Absolutely. Whenever he's in the offensive zone, you got to make sure someone is watching him. He can't go unnoticed. Angle hard to Michelle. Michelle loses it right away, and it goes back the other way. Simon LaFrance down the right wing. LaFrance does a nice move, but it bounced off his skate, and Dion was able to recover. He's a great four-checker to LaFrance. Loses a puck, but makes sure he tries anything he can to try and get it back. Cornoyer tries passing it. But it's intercepted by Dion. Lozon gets it in the offensive zone. Waits a sec. Stick handles. Pass. Fanned on the shot was Willette. And a save made by Adam. Yeah, the old change up right into the glove of Adam. I don't think that was intentional. No, definitely wanted to fire that. It just flubbed off the stick. Now will be an offensive zone draw for UQTR. Five minutes to go in the opening frame. One by Monroe Boucher. Noel. Works his way in. Shot. Blocker. Saved by Adam. I think that might have deflected off the stick of Dion into the netting. Nonetheless, it will stay in the zone. You can see our another chance. They win this faceoff. Faceoff won by Sear this time. Dion. Sends that in. Maverick Gauthier chases it down. David Noel from behind his own net. Turns around. Starts going to the near side. Noel waits behind his net again. Long pass for Pierre-Olivier Roy. He misses it. That'll be called nicing. Yeah, unfortunate for Roy. It would have been potentially a one-on-one. -on -one. Just missed it. So back the other way here. And now for Moncton. Four minutes. Four and 30 about left in the period. Definitely want to make sure you win this draw. For sure. It's Boudreaux taking the face off 
against Monroe Boucher. Mercier at the point. His shot misses wide, bouncing off the boards. Nearly in front was Jeremy Jacob. It's going to be called offside. Are they able to get it out? Pierre Olivier Roy was knocked down. Dumoulin goes to have some words with Marc Antoine Mercier. Yep. Probably just getting to know each other. <laughs> to take a look at the replay of the hit. That's offside. UQTR is a physical team. Moncton wants to make sure they can match that physicality. Make sure they can't get pushed around already down by three. We're going to be down by three, then we're going to start throwing the body around and make our presence felt. Mercier. Dumps it in. Boudreaux. Drouin gets the turnover. Jeremy Jacob. Drop pass. Have it now a knee on knee collision. UQTR bench stood up thinking they should have gone a penalty. Baudouin was the one who fell down. Dennis Toner to Drouin. Drouin down the left wing. Drouin slapper save made by Gravel. Loose puck wide open in front. And Gravel keeps the door shut on a streaking in Jeremy Michel. I mean, what a save by Gravel. Michelle with a great A opportunity as we take a look at the replay. Puck just bounces right in front of the net. A rebound. Michelle picks it up, goes to the back end, but Gravel stops him with the pad. A nice pad save. Let's take a look at another angle. Nobody there. Both defensemen pushed in too deep. Nobody there to cover up the rebound. Michelle had an opportunity, but Gravel was better. David Noel. Near turnover. Now it is an actual turnover. Michelle. Arsenault. His shot scores! No, they rule no goal! Thought it found the inside bar. Look good from our angle. I thought he got the top right corner. Maybe he hit the post, or maybe Gravel got it with the stick or the blocker, but it was a good look. Noel. Clearing attempt blocked by the referee on accident as he was sitting in the bench. Hit his skates. Kellen Gauthier leaves it for Lozon. Lozon. Gauthier knocks down a player in front, and that'll get you an interference call. Absolutely. I was waiting for the arm, looking for the referee's arm to go up. It's going to be a penalty here on UQTR, two minutes for interference. And this is what we were talking about in the pregame. Now down 3 nothing. You gotta convert on the power play if you wanna get back into this game. As we saw yesterday with Brock, they had their opportunities against UMB. They weren't able to capitalize and they were trailing the rest of the way. For Moncton, this is a very important power play this early in the game already. Yeah, Goche looked a bit like an offensive lineman on that play, just kinda laying the block. Can't really do that in hockey. Not nearly as successful in hockey as it is in football. No, absolutely not. It's going to be called every time as we take a look at the replay. Oh, never mind. UQTR having a discussion with the referee at the faceoff die. It was LaFrance getting thrown out. Italian thrown out. Apologies. Oh. Faceoff is one. By the Patriot, but... Ashe has it at the point. They got it. Pelletier, his shot gloved down by Gravel. He's trying to go. Yeah, short side. Not a fan of the shot entirely. It seemed like Gravel had that net covered up. To take a look at the replay of the shot off the post. Gravel didn't it see it. It is off the post. So good call there, it looks like. It was a good shot through the screen, a good idea. Just missed it, just an inch wide. Pelletier, Toner, to Roy, Nathaniel Roy. Waits, drops Pat, drops it back. Ashe couldn't handle the pass, bounced right over his stick, and that gives UQTR an opportunity. UQTR an opportunity to clear, it, and that's exactly what they take. 
Yeah, we heard some complaints about the Madame Athletic Center ice from the two quarterfinal games. Some players were saying it seems like some players are missing passes, whether the puck is bouncing over a tape, but that's a few times now where that puck has missed a lot of players' tapes. Good work by Engelhart. Trying to block the clearing attempt by Gravel. Dion keeps it in. Drop pass, Dion. Cross ice, back to Dion at the point. One-timer, pad save by Gravel. Sear, his shot misses wide. Michelle chases it into the corner again. Dion, back to Michelle. Dion at the point. Michelle in the face-off circle. He's going to send it through, tipped. Anglehart and Gravel saw right through that. Yeah, good read by Gravel. You know, a lot of us may be expecting the, the shot from Michelle, but it was actually a pass for the tip, but Gravel in the right position to make that save. It's almost redirected right into his glove. He looked like he barely had to move for that. I'm liking the looks right now for Moncton on this power play. They're moving the puck around well, but UQT are doing a good job defending the slot to make sure no rebound goes to an opposing player. Big face-off win by Felix Lozon who scored the Queen's Cup winning goal in 2023. Dion. Down the right wing, hammered into the boards by Cournoyer. Refano Mazansoa. Penalty is now over. Boudreaux tries to pass it behind. Jacob pokes it away from Cournoyer. Refano Mazansoa. Pass to Lozon. Lozon had a little bit of trouble receiving that, and Moncton will get it back in the neutral zone. LaPointe. Circles around the net. Rings it off the post. We can hear iron from here. Jacob, his centering pass is picked up by the Patriot. Great end of the first period for UQ for Moncton, but they're still down 3-0 as the final seconds wind down. I believe another penalty here for UQTR. It's going to be Hua going to the box. With two seconds to go in the opening frame, so I can almost guarantee you that Moncton will start the second on a power play. Well, absolutely. And like you said, Curtis, a great end to the period for Moncton. Looked good on the power play. Translated well into five on five. And yeah, they're down three. But some hope for the second period now on the power play. It's going to continue into that period. Hopefully, maybe they can get a shot off here. Pull the goalie, I'd say. Why not? Get the six on four. Pierre Levedo, another one of those top rookies on the Patriot, named to the all-rookie team in the OUA, and was a Memorial Cup champion last season with the Quebec Ramparts. And that'll do it for the opening frame. We mentioned Moncton playing much better than at the beginning, but that... the but that beginning, dominant for UQTR. It's the Simon La France show. And UQTR leaves 3 nothing through the first period. Stick around for the intermission and the second and third period. You're watching CBC on, you're watching U Sports on CBC. It's that moment again, the one you dream of. Every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. 
CBC Sports, just because they love it. Exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca for profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back inside the Mattamy Athletic Center and the 2024 U Sports Men's Hockey Championships on CBC. Curtis Coleman and Matthew Smith bringing you this afternoon's action and the first period, the Simon La France show. Absolutely, Curtis. I mean, he's a star for a reason. Shows up in the big moments. Three points already on the score sheet. And I like the way the UQTR Patriots have been playing. They're getting pucks in the zone. They're moving it well. They're getting shots off. But for Moncton on the other end, down 3 nothing. They started the game a little rusty, a little slow off to begin with. Missed assignments in the slot. Missed assignment up at the point. And, you know, the third goal, obviously, Adam would like to have back. But they were playing really well. The pace of play was still up. They were matching UQTR. And, you know, they are moving the puck well in the Patriot zone. Power play looked good. And then after the power play, they started to play well. So we'll see in the second period if they get going as we take a look at the highlights of the first period. And it started very early here for the Patriot. And it was a one-timer, and by the pass from Simon La France, which got us going off. And then the physicality always rampant in these games. Then a beautiful backdoor feed, Kalen Gauthier. Well, there you go. Nobody's watching Gauthier able to creep up and put himself in that prime position to be able to put that one over the glove side of Adam. And then they kept firing on all cylinders, but Moncton was able to answer back in some way. Then we'll goal. goal. Adam's for sure going to want that one back. And this is a physical game. Like I said, UQTR, not the biggest team in the OUA, but they sure play like it. And Moncton trying to make sure their presence is felt as well, so they're going to try and match that physicality, which they've been doing well so far. Yeah, and Alexi Arsenault had that huge chance in the late or in the mid-first period that we thought was in for a second, but wasn't. Went off the crossbar and 3 nothing through one period to take a look at the stats yeah it's very close only 12 to 9 in shots but like we said Moncton the power play they need to capitalize they're down three you know five on five if it's going to continue at this pace you know they obviously have a chance to get back in this game but they would like to capitalize on these power play opportunities for sure yeah we will see if they're able to do that and what do you think Moncton needs to do for the second period well, of course, they got to score on this power play. Absolutely, they need to score on this power play, only get down by one. But I'm liking the pace of play. Get into the zone, move the puck around, but you want to start shooting from the point. Screen Gravel because he's that good. You're not going to be able to beat him one-on-one -on -one when he sees the puck. So get traffic in front of Gravel. Yeah, and speaking of uh, UQTR and how well they're doing, Simon LaFrance won National Player of the Year in U Sports last year. Now let's take a look at some of the nominees and award winners from this season. Here are the nominees for the Father George Kehoe Memorial Award as the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Men's Hockey Coach of the Year. Voici les candidats pour le prix commémoratif par Georges Quijot présenté à l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sport. 
The Sport Universitaire de l'Atlantique from the AUS, Gardner McDougall, University of New Brunswick, Université du Nouveau Brunswick. Du Sport Universitaire de l'Ontario from the OUA, TJ Ministerski, Université Brock University. Et de l'Association West Canadienne from Canada West, Sven Boutenshan, University of British Columbia, Université de la Colombie Britannique. Le lauréat du prix commémoratif Père Georges Kehoe présenté à l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sport est The winner of the Father George Kehoe Memorial Award as the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Men's Hockey Coach of the Year is Gardner McDougall, University of New Brunswick, Université du Nouveau-Brunswick. The nominees for the Claire Drake Award presented to the U Sports Men's Hockey Rookie of the Year are A nomination pour le prix Claire Drake présenté à la recrue de l'année en hockey masculin U Sport 2024 des Sports Universitaires de l'Atlantique from the AUS Alec Bélanger, Université Dalhousie University Du Sport Universitaire de l'Ontario from the OUA Connor Unger, Université Brock University Et de l'Association West Canadienne from Canada West Jake Poole, University of Calgary Université de Calgary. Le lauréat du prix Claire Drake présenté à la recrue de l'année en hockey masculin U Sport est The winner of the Claire Drake Award as U Sports Men's Hockey Rookie of the Year is Connor Unger, Université Brock University. Congratulations to the winners, McDougal and to Connor Unger, of course. We saw those two teams face off yesterday. It was UNB taking that one, and uh, it's looking a little similar in score today. A little similar. I'll say the pace of play is much different, completely different. Uh, but, yeah, congratulations, Connor Unger. Totally deserving. McDougal, undefeated season in UNB. Very well deserved for, those, uh, for coach and player. As we take a look at the scoring summary of the first period, a lot of UQTR. I mean, all UQTR, but Dwayne started us off with a one-timer from La France, Gautier from a pass from La France, and then La France himself with a snipe over the glove of Adam. Yeah, it has been all UQTR, as we said. La France has been great. As we take a look at the goalie matchups, Alexi Gravel has also been very strong in this one. Absolutely. I mean, look at Gravel in this playoff so far, continuing from the OUA playoffs, 942 save percentage. I mean, it's going to be very hard to beat a guy putting up numbers like that. But most importantly, Adam, his 897 save percentage from the regular season has jumped up from a 938 save percentage. So he's been playing exceptionally well. He just needs to stand on his head this rest of the way to give his team a chance to come back. CBC Sports is the home of you. University Sports in Canada, the best youth sports women's volleyball teams battle for the 2024 Women's Volleyball Championship from McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. Catch the action exclusively on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. You sports on CBC. Chase the glory. That will be an interesting start. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup.
celebrity hit point and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats du Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U-Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats du sport. Welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center. It is 3 to nothing for Université de Québec Trois-Rivières as they lead Les Aigles Bleus de Moncton after one period. Curtis Coleman and Matthew Smith bringing you the action. And like we said, it has been just a dominant first 10 minutes for UQTR. Then Moncton kind of flipped the switch, but uh, still UQTR's got that goal lead. I mean, it's thanks to Simon LaFrance. So one goal and two assists so far, lighting the lamp on the score sheet. But like you mentioned, Moncton playing a lot better near the end of that period. They're still very much in this hockey game. 40 minutes to go. You have plenty of time to score three goals. You got a power play to start the second period. So, you know... For Moncton, if you're feeling, you know, unconfident or you think it's over, well, it's not. So, And the players know that, and they're talking about that in the locker room. The head coach, Daniel Cormier, making sure that that message is being spread throughout. And they're going to keep playing the way they've been playing, and hopefully they can turn it up a little bit at the start of the second. And if they have a really good power play, it can kind of change the momentum potentially in their favor. But if UQTR really kills this penalty dominantly, then that might go right back into their favor. So, Moncton, they got to do some work here. Absolutely. Could be a major momentum shift for either way. It could get Moncton right back in it, or it could be kind of the final nail in the coffin. Well, I wouldn't say final nail because hopefully they'll get more power play opportunities. But, like, you know, we don't know if they will. So, this is a huge part in this game. But, yes, if they do kill this penalty dominantly, that momentum will switch back into their favor something Moncton and Adams certainly do not want to happen yeah and we take a look at the player stats player comparisons we took a look at a couple players to watch going into the game and Simon LaFrance has absolutely lived up to that billing. I mean, one goal, two assists. And look at this pass behind the back. He's got eyes behind his head to just know that his defender is there. He takes a quick peek, sees the defender rushing up, and a perfect pass tape to tape, allowing Goche to just be able to shoot that one over the blocker side. And then a snipe, obviously, that Adam is going to want back. But nonetheless, LaFrance showing why he is a star and one of the best players in the country. Yeah, he has been a stud tonight, and that is why, main reason why UQTR has such a big lead. Main reason why they're so successful too, right? We talk about all these players joining them from the queue, and LaFrance, one of those players who has just been, the, you could say, the best player this season for them, alongside Gravel, and just a superstar in the OUA and in this country. And, you know, he's showing why three points, a factor on each goal so far in the first period. Yeah, he, the OUA East MVP, of course. We'll see if he can continue his magic or can Moncton get back in this in the second period. It's 3 nothing. UQTR leads Moncton. You're watching U Sports on CBC. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. 
Tickets are available now at drcanada.ca slash centennial cup. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur de l'univers complexe et en mutation. C'est incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center. It's 3-0 UQTR leads. Les Aigles Bleus de Moncton through one period. Curtis Coleman and Matthew Smith bringing you tonight's action as we see Pierre-Olivier Edouard head to the box. And I always thought it would be a lot more fun if the players were in the box in the intermission. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't that be something if that was a rule? They miss out on all the locker room talk. But, you know, can, the question is, can Moncton come back in this hockey game already down by three goals at the start of the second period and you know it's going to be a tough uphill battle but right now what they need to work on is of course they want to get their power play going capitalize on their opportunities but their zone exits UQTR why they're so successful is because they're so good at getting the puck out and transitioning that offense into the opposing team's zone so, you know, Moncton's really going to have to work on it because it's been a lot of times now UQTR has handed them in their zone zone and able to forecheck and steal the puck away. And that's something that you don't want already down by three. So Moncton, hopefully they talked about that, making sure that, you know, nobody's left open in the slot, making sure the points are checked up. And now on the power play, they got to make sure they can get a goal here. We start the second period with a face-off win by the Patriot. Jacob Dion to Michelle. He drops it and ski carrying it into the offensive zone is Sear. Sear just sends it around the boards to the near side with Michelle. She had a great chance earlier. Dion fakes the shot from the point. He sends it right into the slot. Sear was walking in and he shot it high. Dion from the point. Not sure what he was trying to do there, but it's blocked by Samuel Italian and he is able to get it out. Good work by LaPointe to be that net front presence in front. Arsenault pass right there. Sear from the face-off circle. Inside of it is turned aside by Gravel. Just to finish my thought, we got to see players in front of Gravel here on the power play. Dion gets it back. Sear, the captain. Dion, one-timer. Michelle, I think he was trying to slap pass there, Absolutely. but it was right blocked in front. Sear, his shot misses wide. Michelle from the near side. Drops it for Dion. Dion sends it wide. Sear picks it up, haven't lost control of it yet, and now they do as Engelhart can't receive that pass, just goes right by his skates, and they're able to clear it out. Well, Curtis Coleman, notorious jinxer. <laughs> yep. Team was able to clear it, but I love the way that power play looked in the first minute. You got LaPointe in front of uh, Gravel. They're moving the puck well. They're shooting it. They got some great A looks. They just couldn't get it through. Yeg Le Bleu have it. Nathaniel Roy loses it, and it's cleared away by Devin Noel, the captain. 15 seconds in the penalty. Last chance here for Moncton with the man advantage. Haché to Peltier. Peltier drops it for Roy. Roy. Waiting for it. Long point shot. Stopped by Gravel and Boudreau had his back turned. <laughs> Boudreau kind of squatted down to avoid the puck instead of turning to his side. I guess that was just the first instinct he thought of doing. Haché hit by Noel as the penalties come to an end. Simon Lafrance hit from Nick from behind there. No call on the play. Could have seen one. Now let's see where the momentum has shifted. If they kill 
the moment they shifted back into UQTR or Moncton. Now they got the great eight looks. Bass fumbling themselves. with the puck. Baudouin starts the other way. Leaves it for Simon LaFrance. His shot turned aside by Olivier Adam. Well, UQG are certainly hemmed in their own zone in the power play. Moncton just unlucky. So you'd like to think that that shift in play has turned to their side where they're able now to get things going. Their confidence has been boosted up a little as we take a look at the replay of LaFrance's shot there saved by Adam. You want to make sure the momentum now is back on your side and hopefully the confidence is back in the Moncton players' hearts. Martin tries throwing it through. That's blocked. Martin was battling for the rebound. He's just going to drop it back. Kalen Gauthier, his point shot blocked away by Olivier Adam. Gauthier, again, slapper, blocked by Peltier, and it goes behind the net. Couture, Refino Mazansoa. Now it's dumped in, and Adam gets it behind his own net. Couture. Great crossing by center Adam. night. Pe center right, Peltier. To Basque. Basque. Kilbolt. Kilbolt, long shot from the Aigle Bleu misses. That was Dion. Basque, Dion. Lapointe, his shot turned aside. I'm all for getting pucks on net, but you got to make sure some sort of traffic is in front of Gravel or else. You're just going to lose possession in the zone. Jan Felix playing a great pass. Boudreau walks in. Save made by Gravel. And that probably leads to another problem. They just keep shooting it at Gravel. I mean, there was the, you know, a potential two-on-one. They elected to shoot Gravel in the right position to make that save. But when you're holding, that was on the rush. But when you're holding position, as we take a look at the replay here, on the rush, obviously you're going to take that shot because it was Loris who made a great play diving down and stopping the pass from getting through. But when you have possession, you're containing possession in the zone. You want to make sure there's people in front of Gravel, and you don't just shoot it like LaPointe did at the point when there was nobody there in front of him. You're just going to lose possession. UQTR is going to pick it back up and transition through the neutral zone. LaPointe. Captain by Roy. And a high stick call. Blown down four minutes into the second. But this has been all Moncton so far. Start of the second period. But Finishing the power play. They're starting to get that momentum going in the offensive zone. Gravel standing strong. 15 saves on 15 shots against. And like we talked about going into this, UQTR are very familiar with this situation. They've made the final four each of the last two seasons. Looking to do it for the third time. In a row. Yeah, and they're going to rely on those experienced players, right? Like La France. And they've delivered so far. And it's a big reason why every year they keep finding themselves in these positions to win trophies. There's Felix La France who dumps it in. Toner getting hit by Frenette. Tries a backdoor pass. Frenette regroups with the puck on the near boards. Mercier tries pinning him into the boards, but he was too far away. Now a few players battling for it in the corner. Simon Lafrance comes away with it. Cournoyer. He lost possession for a second, but gets it back down low. Centering pass from Lafrance. Picked off by Mercier with ease. But they can't get it out. Lafrance tries a little spin move. Won't get by. That's what I've been talking about. you got to make sure you got a clean exit of the zone. Because UQTR, they have a re relentless forecheck. Nathaniel Roy trying to go end-to-end. -end, walks in. Shot. Shouldered away by Gravel. Great effort from Nathaniel Roy. They're able to keep it in. Refino Mazansoa plays it around to Cornway. Roy walks in down the right wing. Roy goes to the backhand. He loses it. I think it was poked away by Refino Mazansoa. Having a great performance on the defensive end. Sear gets in, cuts in front, nearly had a great shot for being knocked down by Cornoyer, who lost his stick. Heading to the bench for another one as Gravel plays it away to the side. Pelletier. Turnover, bad turnover. Baudouin shot. Save made by Adam. He looked behind him. He thought it had trickled through. It trickled wide instead. 
Remember, Kalen Gauthier intercepts it at neutral, in the neutral zone. Noel looking down the boards. Monroe Boucher, it's out of his reach. Adam leaves it. Good zone exit. Sent around, it's a turnover. Monroe Boucher, and he's hit hard into the boards. Alexandre Couture. Stick handling it in. Dion loses it. Basque knocks it down and it goes behind the net and it's picked up by Noel. He's going to start a rush the other way. Three on three. Noel stick handles by one but falls right after. May have just messed up a big chance. Yeah, got tripped up by his own teammate there. Behind the net. Maverick Gauthier's long shot is blocked. Monroe Boucher. Pass shot. Misses high from Jeremy Martin. Here comes Wall right off the bench. Getting right involved on the forecheck. Yeah, a lot more chippy in the second period. There's a bad turnover. Pierre-Olivier Roy in front. Dumoulin opted to pass instead of shooting. That may have been the wrong decision. Potential icing call. Gravel comes out to play it as it looked like it was going to be Drouin to the first to get there. A smart move. Yeah, I don't mind the pass by Wa. It just missed his teammate's tape. If it were to get on it, it would have been a great opportunity to shoot that one. As a penalty now being called. Delay call against the Aigle Bleu, I believe. It is. All right, UQTR going to the power play, Curtis. And in the OUA, 25.2% power play. Good for third, but you know what's even better? When your power play is 30.6 when you're on the road. And, well, they're here on Madame Athletic Center Ice. So a very dangerous team on the road on the power play. And yeah. Moncton, you got to make sure you get this puck out because you cannot afford to go down four goals here halfway through the second. Frenette taking the face off. It's won by Frenette. He angles it back to Noel. Noel shot tipped high by Alexi Arsenault and way out of play. Yeah, good stick by Arsenault to make sure that pass didn't get through. Or else it been Wa in front of the net. And typically when this kind of stuff happens, it's Alexi Arsenal in the box. 85 penalty minutes on the season. One of the most penalized players in U Sports. Noel Frenette. Back to Noel at the point from the middle. His shot misses wide on the right side. Frenette gets it right back on the near side. Into the faceoff circle. Gets it right back. Frenette waits. Goes underneath. Right in the slot. Turned aside the, his, the centering pass in front from... Felix LaFrance took a deflection, and I think that slowed it down enough that Roy couldn't get off a shot at lightning speed. Yeah, like we saw with UMB yesterday, the power play setup of the umbrella. The pass is going to be going into the slot, so you got to make sure that slot man is covered. Jacob Blur, get it. Jacob sends it in. Dion. Taken down, recovered by Felix LaFrance. Boudreau makes the play. Felix LaFrance just sends it behind the net. Frenette's wide open behind the net. That doesn't do much help when you're behind the net. A pass, centering pass in front, and it's Felix LaFrance who buries it. A fourth point for Simon LaFrance. Wow, LaFrance to LaFrance. Just a beautiful pass by Simon LaFrance to Felix LaFrance. He, is, he has an act for finding his teammates as we take a look behind the net. He was around. wide open he there, was, and exactly. that just cancels out what I said. I said, no, not much use being behind the net by yourself. There's the use of being behind the net by yourself. Making me look stupid. <laughs> making uh, Well, that's what best players do. They make great players look silly. Great commentators look silly. But Simon LaFrance, just the ability to go behind the net, stop himself up, and make a tape-to-tape -tape pass to Felix LaFrance. No chance for Adam and Simon LaFrance just putting on a clinic right now. Yeah, the penalty kill should be over. It is. Five on five again with that four nothing goal. 
ignore the graphic on your screen because they are playing at five players. Gautier. Sends it behind the net. Chased away and Seer. Two UQTR and one Moncton player taken out. So maybe it's an odd man rush. It's not. Rapinoe Mazansoa there to make another great play defensively. He's going to angle it out to Lozon. Martin dumps it in. Pelletier sends it off the near boards. Michel. Well, great pass in front. That one's a goal. Jeremy Lapointe finally gets Moncton on the board. Well, the bad news is you went down 4 nothing. The good news is, is you score right away to save some time on the clock as you take a look at the replay. Just a great zone exit off the boards. A pass and then just the perfect shot right under the crossbar. And now they're only down by three. Only wasted about a minute there. So we're back to a three-goal stand. Jeremy Lapointe, one of the best rookies in the nation this year. 34 points in 30 games, five points in the playoffs. And he is on the board for Moncton. Gauthier's long shot is blocked. Baudouin sends it behind. Martin. Arsenal. Knocked down behind the net. And Monroe Boucher knock, knocks down Jeremy Lapointe. Michelle. Lapointe. And he's looking for number two. That's turned aside by Gravel. Icing waved off, or offside waved off, sorry. Oh, you were right. It was a waved off icing. And that saves UQTR from getting the face off back in their own end. Basque angles it accidentally, probably. Centering pass in front. Gravel makes the save. The puck is teed up in front of him. And the Patriot are able to clear the net and the zone. A penalty here. Coming. And we will head to a quick break. You are watching U Sports on CBC. <laughs> Apologies, no break. No, no break. Can't cut the break during penalties. There is a power play. Yeah, and going to the box, Basque, as he leaves the box. Nope. Re-enters. Wrong box. Went into the UQTR penalty box. That makes sense. It's just not the penalty you really want to take in this oh, stage. Oh, no. I believe he just got thrown out. Yeah. That'll be William Basque's night. Wow. So this is going to be an extended power play here for UQTR. A power play that, if they score on, will not end. So this is certainly not has put, that hasn't put Moncton in a great position. Yeah, a bad a, play by Bass to take a penalty like that. A golden opportunity for them to really try to ice the game. And for uh, just a side note, Felix LaFrance scored his 13th total goal of the season. Sorry, 15th total goal of the season. He scored 29 points in the regular season in 28 games, 6 points and 7 in the playoffs, and uh, nearly a point a game in the QMJHL. So like we said, basically an all-star team. And the... Oh, oh. oh, you do not want to see that happen, Bass. Just a bonehead pa a penalty to take. A cross check right to the face, a well deserved, not well deserved, but a deserved five minute penalty. And this could be the nail. In the you talked about nail and coffin. This could be the nail in the coffin now. Power play that 
will go the full five minutes regardless if they score one or two goals. And look who's taking the face off. It's the man who's lived in Moncton's nightmares tonight, Simon La France. Uh, yeah, this is a bad position for Moncton to be in. Jacob shovels it out. Now, I know the tensions are high, emotions are high, but you got to be able to be level-headed and stay disciplined. Here's a stretch pass. Boudreaux walks in. He's tied up by Cournoyer. They're grabbing a hold of each other, looking like best friends. <laughs> Burnett starts the other way. Roy, his laser pass goes off the mark from Simon Lafrance. That point just flips it to Gravel, who just knocks it away. Frenette down the left side. Stops and sends it off the boards. Noel. Simon Lafrance. Back to Noel. Noel to Frenette on the other side of the point. He goes to Lafrance. His shot. He fanned on it a little. It was on the ice and a pad save by Olivier Adam. Yeah, Liz Lizanne, or L'Italien right there on the doorstep. Puck just missed his tape. If he had it, that would have been buried into the net for a 5-1 lead. Refinoma Zansoa dumps it back in. But they're able to clear it again. Good start to the penalty kill for Moncton. But every time I say something, <laughs> I look stupid afterwards. Well, let's see if I have the jinx curse. If Moncton can kill this power play, it would be a huge momentum shifter being able to kill a five-minute penalty. Croix. Able to get it out, and that's an offside call. L'Italien was over the line. They've killed off a minute 48 so far. You're happy to hear that. Your Moncton player, we take a look at a replay here from the one timer and the Italian right there on the doorstep. Oh, it was missed the puck. Face off. Tangled up, and Lausanne ends up getting it back, but it goes all the way down the ice. Basically the same result as if Moncton had won the face off. Italian. Ruffin Omazansaw. He's double teamed there. And hit into the boards. Cournoyer. Italian. Ruffin Omazansoa on the left side. Cournoyer. Italian underneath. Lausanne waits. I believe. Adam got a piece of that, but it was very close. May have hit the crossbar. Listen, a high danger opportunity will be Willette in the slot 86. That's where they're going to be looking to pass that puck. As you saw there, Lazon didn't have Willette, so he elected to shoot. There you got to trust your goaltender, Adam, to make a save like that one-on-one. -on -one. But you can't let the pass go through, or it's bad news for Adam. 2.23 to play in the power play. Shots 18 to 16 for Moncton. They're keeping up, but Lexi Gravel's been doing great. And the quality of shots, big difference as well. Simon La France to Noel at the point. La France in the faceoff circle. Wasn't a great pass, so he's going to have to regroup. Frenette, Noel, not a great pass either. Not a great pass to La France. They keep the puck, though. Just have to outstretch their sticks to get it. La France. At the point, sends it in front. Felix Lafrance, he's on the backhand. Oh, what a wow. move by Felix Lafrance. He pulls Adam out of the net and then at the last second goes to his forehand and tucks it home to make it 5-1. to one. Felix Lafrance, we take a look at this replay. Adam completely biting on the backhand, pass trying to go through, a bad pass, bites on the backhand, just cuts back to the forehand, an amazing goal. Felix Lafrance hearing all about Simon Lafrance, he said, hey, I have the same last name, I should be getting the same credit, and he certainly did there. That's his second goal. of the game, which I believe, well, that ties him for the lead in the whole tournament. Granted, only two other games have been played, but still a long way to go. And two minutes left in this power play for U2QR. And uh, just a side note, Simon LaFrance assisted on that goal. That's five points now. I mean, come on. To be 
on the score sheet for every single goal your team scored goes to show how good he is and how impactful he can be in these big ty uh, type of games. La France did lead the tournament in scoring when they won the championship back in 2022 with nine points. It's already halfway there in one game. Well, you got to assume he's leading the tournament right now so far. So No other team scored five goals. <laughs> well, history potentially repeat itself here. Italian. Lozon. Knocked off by Dion. Minute 20 to go in the power play. Italian, Cornoyer, Italian, underneath, Willette nearly got it in front, but it was broken up, nice play by Jan-Felix Lapointe. Yeah, it was a good stick there by Dion just to break that pass up, he knows where the puck, where they want to go with the puck, into the slot, puts his stick down, deflects it wide. Yeah, for no Felix was on another member of that all tournament team when they won the championship. Just goes to show how experienced and mature this team is with so many players who have reached the top and have won national championships and Queen Cups. Trying to do it again. Pierre Olivier Roy. Frenette sends it around. Simon La France. It's knocked away. And Nathaniel Roy clears it. 13 seconds to go in the penalty. It's just unfortunate for UQTR. They're not able to ever host a Queen's Cup tournament, although they're always there. Yeah. Talked about that, but it's part of playing in the OUA. Got to get mean, a Quebec League going. It is Ontario, so it's kind of... Makes sense to host it in Ontario, and I don't think UQTR has seemed too phased by it because they've won three in a row. Absolutely not. They don't mind. I'm sure that OUA fans across the country mind when a team is winning and they're not even in the same province. 3-10 to go in the second period. And we will throw this to break now, I believe. Stick around. But you're watching U Sports on CBC. Zone clearances, not too much missed. I don't believe any shots were missed. Dion, centering pass in front, knocked away. Drouin gets it back on the right side. Drouin does a little spin move. Cuts inside, trying to go to the forehand. He's taken down. That'll be a penalty against number 17, Jeremy Martin. No, you didn't miss much except the huge line brawl that just erupted reminded me of Slapshot. No, I'm just kidding. Didn't miss much as we have a penalty called. And it will be on UQ. Oh, no, no penalty call. Excuse me. No, oh, there is a penalty. Power play. Yep. Nobody in the box. Out. Oh, there is. I just can't see them, but their stick is poking through. Yep. Ad space does tend to do that. So Moncton now back on the power play. Weird bounce keeps the puck in the zone. Englehart tries keeping it in. Camp Monroe Boucher tries passing it to a teammate, but no one was there, so Jeremy Lapointe gets it. Sear drops it. Dion skates it at the point. Far side. Michelle, Dion here in the center. Michelle tried slap passing it. That one didn't work out. Michelle cuts back in, drops it for Dion. 
Dion. Michelle from a bad angle. Stopped and flies into the air. Goes out of play. Blown down. Yeah, Michelle just... I think he's overthinking it. He's, he's double-guessing himself. He tried the slap pass. didn't work out. So then when he's in a bad angle, he figures, okay, I'm just going to shoot it here. But Gravel makes the easy save. You know, you're on the power play. You're down by four goals. You know, it's going to be tough to try and get that perfect slap pass through. Might as well just take the one-timer and shoot on net. Hope for a rebound at this stage of the game. Face-off won by the Patriot. They clear it out. And it remains. 5-1. Open in front. A pass. And Frenette turns. Fire save made by Adam. A weird spot to get a great scoring chance. Yeah, and she sort of did the reverse hit because he knew it was coming so he could be able to get that shot opportunity off. Great play by Frenette. Jeremila Point. The goal scorer for Moncton. Long point shot, trickles through Cannon. Rebound, pad saved by Gravel. It was Engelhart right there. Back again, Michelle, one-timer tipped, stopped by Gravel. He hangs on. See, I don't know anymore if Michelle's trying to slap pass or it was just lucky he got through and nearly went in, but... CBC Sports is the home of university sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports women's hockey team. They face off in the 2024 GFL U Sports Champion Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy in Saskatoon. The action began yesterday and continues tonight on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, CBC Sports app, and CB Sport, CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. Good looking power play by Moncton once again. Just getting stopped by Gravel. They had a good opportunity getting the shot on net. Two players in front looking for the rebound. They got to just keep this up with a minute left in the period. Hopefully they can connect here on the power play. Face off won by the Patriot. Able to angle it around. Lausanne and Pelletier collide. Lausanne falls to the ground without a stick. Ache drops it. Ache backhand pass and Boudreaux tried crossing it. No one was in front. Back to the point. Roa. His shot trickles, flutters high. Penalty coming to an end. And another successful penalty kill for UQTR. Lausanne without a stick still. Loses it, but he manages to uh, occupy a couple players. So I see that as success. Dion. Against the boards. Drops it. Five seconds. The seconds tick down. The end of the second. One last chance for Roy. Poke checked away by David Noel. And that'll do it for the second. Five to one. UQTR has extended their lead on the Moncton Aigle Bleu. CBC Sports. Another championship going on. TVC Sports, the home of sports, University Sports of Canada, the best men's volleyball teams face off in Kingston. Catch the action exclusively tonight on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app, CBC Sports YouTube, U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. We will be back with the intermission shortly, but for now, you're watching U Sports on CBC. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, Chase the glory. Viseo.
They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Change was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> fans check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the nike team collection visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection nike team it's that moment again the one you dream of every night la seule chose qui te préoccupe c'est la gloire le cheminement de la réussite of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Visez over. do it for the likes or for the shares they do it for the fun of it for the thrill for the camaraderie for the memories cbc sports just because they love it the exchange was awesome yeah <laughs> Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center. It's 5-1 UQTR through to uh, your on in the U Sports Men's National Hockey Championships on CBC. Curtis Coleman, Matthew Smith bringing you today's action. And what a start, What a second period for UQTR. Absolutely. I mean, the story of the game for both teams, for UQTR, it's one name. It's Simon Lafrance. I mean, five points, a superstar. You can be playing good hockey, but as soon as those superstars step on the ice, they make magic happen. And the best you, thing you can do against them is limit them. Unfortunately for Moncton, that hasn't happened in this game now. For Moncton, 
one of the big things we have to look at on the stat sheet is their power play. 0 for 3, they had three opportunities. They're down 5-1. You know, those were opportunities for them to get back in this game, to grab momentum. Unfortunately, they're being stopped by great play by Gravel. So, you know, those are going to be two of the things we all look at when this game is said and done. Yeah, and we take a look at some of the highlights from the second period. We mentioned that Moncton was kind of rallying at the end of the first, but uh, UKTR kind of shut that down pretty well, especially Alexi Gravel. Absolutely. They Look, they had the opportunities. They're in the offensive zone a couple times, a few times actually. But then again, you got Simon on France. If you give him an opportunity, if you make if if you're not watching an assignment, he will find his teammates. And if they're undefended or unchecked, he'll make you pay for it. And that's what's happened in this game so far: five points. And he's been a part of every single goal that's been scored for UQTR. So you know, it's just one of those things that you know you can't help but be in awe of when you look at Simon La France and. For Moncton, it's just unfortunate because they are playing a good hockey game. They're out shooting UQTR 22 to 18. They've been in the zone. They've had good looks on the power play. It's just unfortunate that Simo La France, they're playing against a superstar and him who has 45 points in the regular season, five now leading the way in the Nationals U Sports Men's playoffs. As you take a look at the stats of the game, and it's going to be that power play as you see UQTR one for two. They got the five minute power play that, you know, uh, Bass took a terrible penalty take, cross-check to the face. But for them, they don't, you know, they, they are only one for two. They could have scored more goals on the power play, sure, but that's not, you know, what they're looking for right now. They just got to make sure Moncton doesn't get back in this game. They'll take five minutes to kill on the power play, but on the other end, 0 for 3, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow uh, for the Moncton coaching staff after the game. They had their opportunities, and they just couldn't deliver. Absolutely. And... Speaking of Simon LaFrance, an award he won last year was Player of the Year. And every year, U Sports presents a series of major honors to student athletes in each sport. Here are the nominees and winners of the 2024 U Sports Basketball Community Service Awards and Player of the Year Awards. The nominees for the Dr. Randy Gregg Award for the student who excels in hockey, academics, and community involvement are Les candidats pour le prix Dr. Randy Gregg pour l'excellence dans le hockey, les études, et l'engagement communautaire sont Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Alec Belanger, Université Dalhousie University. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Alexandre Gagnon, Université McGill University. Et de l'Association Ouest Canadienne, from Canada West, Dawson Holt, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. Le laureat du prix Dr. Randy Gregg pour l'engagement communautaire est the winner of the Dr. Randy Gregg Award for Community Service is Alexandre Gagnon, Université McGill University. The nominees for the Senator Joseph A. Sullivan Trophy as the U Sports Men's Hockey Player of the Year are En nomination pour le trophée du Sénateur Joseph A. Sullivan, présenté à l'athlète de l'année U Sport en hockey masculin, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Austin Keating, University of New Brunswick, Université du Nouveau-Brunswick, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Simon La France, Université du Québec à Trois-Rivières. UQTR, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Connor Bouchard, Université Mount Royal University. Le lauréat du trophée Joseph A. Sullivan décerné aux joueurs de l'année en hockey masculin U-Sport est The winner of the Senator Joseph A. Sullivan Trophy as the U-Sports Player of the Year in men's hockey is Connor Bouchard, Université Mount Royal University. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more
more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Parce que le sport, c'est aussi des parcours inspirants. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport à Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sport. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. Welcome back to the 2024 U Sports Men's Hockey Championship on CBC. Curtis Coleman, Matthew Smith bringing you the action today. And it's 5-1 to one for UQTR through two periods over Moncton. 
Yeah, Curtis, it has been all Simon La France in this one for UQTR. Uh, five points so far in this game, potentially for more here in the third period. But, you know, Moncton has played a good game. They're just getting snake bitten by star play. And so as we take soon a look at the scoring summary, um, La France, like I said, a lot on this game right now. La France, La Pointe. And then Felix left, Felix left France two times, and then left point as well for Moncton, scoring their first goal. And, yeah. you know, Moncton, like I said, they have been playing well. They just have been snake bitten by star play right now. Their power play hasn't been able to capitalize for them. And they'd be a lot, you know, closer in this game if they went three for three or two for three. But right now, down four goals in the third period. Yeah, it has been... Uh of a game for Simon Lafrance, one he will remember, the man who scored the championship winning goal in the 2022 tournament in overtime against Alberta. Now it feels weird not having Alberta here because they've been runner up the last three tournaments, but uh, you know, always room for new teams and well, UQTR says no way. <laughs> Well, that's hockey, right? You know, you never know. It's never a guarantee every year that you'll be in the same place you were last year. And we see that with Alberta. And now for Moncton, they're going to have to activate their defensemen here. Even if you give up odd man rushes, you're down four goals. Yeah, you got to get something going. As we begin the third period, Gauthier to Noel. Back to Kalen Gauthier, one of the goal scorers for... UQTR, Dion. For UQTR, you just want to stay out of the box and keep this game five on five. Kill the time, and you'll be moving on to the next round with ease. It's Michelle who turns and fires and misses wide. De deflect, redirected back in behind the net. Noel. Rua. Picks up a turnover. In Sear shot misses and it deflects into the mesh. Well, whether it's Gravel robbing you, it's either that or your shots are getting deflected out of the way. Unlucky here for Moncton. Yeah, they have done a pretty credible job. They have, you're absolutely right. For 7C going up against the reigning Queen Cup champions, they played really well. In my opinion, they just, the power play hasn't helped them out. But a not great start, and that can really hurt you. Remember, Moncton, one of the most improved teams for the 2024 season in all of U Sports, and they're showing that with their first appearance since 2012. Unfortunately for them, looks like it's not going to end great as Willette nearly potted it to make it 6-1. He hit the post. Willette tries a backdoor pass, bounces off the net. Susie tries dropping it back, can't find anyone. Sear. In they come, down the wing. Centering pass in front. That doesn't get in front. Or that doesn't get to anybody. As Mercier has to regroup. Haché. Long shot save made by Gravel. Cournoyer waits behind his own net. Yeah, UQTR, no pressure here to try and force a pass. They have the time. They're going to make sure they clean or they exit the zone cleanly. Can't afford any turnovers in your own end. Well, they certainly can't afford it. Up four right now, but you don't want to just give it up. Drouin. Long pass. Bounces off the stick of Big Jacob. There by Martin. Now Maverick Gauthier. Kalen Gauthier in his own end. Martin. Dion. Chases it behind the net. Sticks around. Dion rushes in down the right wing. He's tangled up and taken down behind the net. Gravel will grab onto the puck that was sitting at the side of the net. He'll freeze it. Well, now for Moncton, any offensive zone 
face-off win you can get. You gotta make sure puck's going to that as we take a look at the replay here. Inside, you gotta make sure you're defending your slot, like I've been saying all game, because Wallet had a great A opportunity, just shot it off the post. Moncton certainly couldn't afford that, or else that would have absolutely ended this game. Long shot, turned aside by Gravel again. He's been very strong, 22 out of 23 saves. Pierre-Olivier Edouard takes it in down the left wing, covered by Dion, who has been on the ice for a large portion of this game. It has been a long game for Jacob Dion, and for good reason, one of the top players on the team. Sear centering pass intercepted by L'Italien in front of the goal. Pierre-Olivier Edouard slows it down and gets it out. Noel clears it, and it's not going to be an icing because Baudouin was speeding in. He was going to be the first one there by a mile. We talk about Noel's ice time, and for sure right now, Moncton's going to shorten their bench, try and get their top scores the most ice time to try and get back in this game. Stretch pass. Shot, gloved down by Gravel. It was Thomas Peltier who had joined the rush as a defenseman. That's it. Keep things simple. Make Gravel freeze the puck. Get the face-off draw, hopefully win it, and then you just got to crash to the net as your defenseman takes a shot on Gravel. You got to make sure there's people in front in case of a rebound and in front of Gravel so he can't see anything getting through. Turn right off the shot from Dwight misses. Behind the net, Englehart lost it. Chipped in by Frenette. Roy tried leaving in miscommunication. No one was there, and it goes off a couple sticks into the mesh. Yeah, just a lot of messy play right now to start the period for both teams. Can't get anything going offensively. Just a lot of stoppages to play so far. But UQTR, they don't mind. As long as they get the puck out of their zone, they don't care what happens in Moncton's zone as long as the clock keeps ticking. Face off, stop. Someone's probably getting thrown out. It's Lazon. Compared it's, to yesterday. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You said it well, the referees were acting like bouncers in the face off dot. A lot of players for Brock were getting kicked out of the face off dot. Susie, tangled up by Mercier. Susie somehow stays on the puck. Ludovic Susie played no games in the regular season, two games in the playoffs. Talk about uh, thrown in with the Lions. Oh, hey, if you keep winning in the playoffs like they did when they went all the way to the finals, they're going to try and keep that same winning lineup intact. Hey, UQTR certainly didn't have the easiest road here. They took down Ottawa in three games. Took down McGill in three games, then won a double overtime in the finals against TMU. It was a a long playoffs for them, and they managed to clear it all. That double OT win versus TMU, but they're showing no rust right now. They've scored five goals in this game, the most so far in the tournament. Abs Port. That's what we've said. Gautier to Noel. Noel sends it behind the net. Dion was chasing it, but didn't get it. Dumoulin. Noel wires it. Point save made by Adam. That was a powerful shot from David Noel. Yep. Make sure that you want to make sure that Adam freezes that puck so you can get a, new, a, a line change in. A new five as we look at the replay. Point shot. Just fire it. Make sure there's a stoppage play. You get a face off. Now for UQTR, they want to win it. Kill some more time off the clock. Or maybe get another goal. Yeah. Noel. His point shot just misses wide. Who's puck? L'Italien. Takes it and wraps it around. L'Italien in the face off circle on the near side. He's up against the boards. Tries leaving it. No one was there. Chasing it into the corner and coming away with it is Jan Felix for that point. A point clears it. 
Fournoyer tangled with Jeremila Point, the goal scorer for the Aigle Bleu. Italien limping to the bench or slowly moving to the bench. Maybe he's having trouble opening the door. Waiting for his teammates to open the door for him or coach. Big collision, Arsenault. And Martin, Martin gets by though. He nearly had a rush. Maverick Gauthier keeps it in. Plays for Simon La France. Stolen right away by Thomas Peltier. Sear. Haché. Olivier Luc Haché. Been pretty quiet in this one after stepping up in the playoffs big time. Rafinho Mazansoa. It's clearing attempt picked off. Sent behind the net. Centering pass from Sear. Found nobody. Just the inside of the blocker of Gravel. Long shot from Mercy. That's tipped. That nearly took a strange bounce in. What an unbelievable save by Gravel to track the deflection and reaches Pada to make the save. Wow, great feed in front. Big save by Gravel on Toner. I mean, this just has to be so frustrating as a Moncton fan or Moncton player. You got the opportunities. You have the grade A chances. But Gravel is just a brick wall out there right now. An icing called. I mean, you talk about Simon La France and how good he's been in this game. But we got to give credit to Gravel, right? This game could be a lot closer if it isn't for him. Yeah, a lot of good scoring chance. But Gravel, very strong in between the timeout here, followed by Moncton. I believe called by UQTR, maybe. Nonetheless, both teams are going to talk it over. Moncton's just trying to get a game plan and somehow beat Gravel. The only way you can do that is get traffic in front of his eyes, because we take a look at a little compilation of their chances. They haven't been able to solve them too much besides just the one. Well, there's been a lot of good chance, obviously, that one. An easy save. But, I mean, see there, just some high-scoring chances. And I think his rebound control has been on full display. That's it. You want to make sure those pucks go to the side. Keep looking at these highlights right there. The goal by LaPointe, the only thing to get past Gravel tonight. But they got a lot of chances on the power play. But Gravel was able to stop them. Dion makes a nice move to pinch. Drouin gets it in the slot, but Gravel swallowed that one up. And the chances, as we saw, just keep getting better and better from what we saw from the highlight pack. We take a look at the replay. Wide open in the slot, just a pass stretched out. Had to corral that in. But Gravel still makes an amazing save. Jeremy Jacob taking the face off against Simon L'Italien. Samuel L'Italien. Cleared by Willette. He speeds down the left side. Dion gets it. Willette takes it right back. Slot pass in. Dancing by. Great poke check from Adam to get it off of Lozon. Yeah, just another this assignment, almost puck watching. You got to make sure that you have everyone defended well. Lozon covered by Lapointe. Just leaves it behind Drouin. Good pass. They're trying to get something going. Jan Felix Lapointe down the left side, turns, centering pass. It managed to get through a couple players, but Engelhart couldn't get it. It was a few players away. Jan Felix, Jan Felix Lapointe shoots again. That missed wide on the near side. Noel finds Dumoulin. Pelletier knocks that down, swats it there, and that's a clear hand pass. They're going to call that every time. Yeah, that was very clear. Obviously, when you're in UQTR zone, you're going to have to touch it up because if you don't, that just gives UQTR the opportunity to get it out of their zone and potentially transition 
into Moncton's defensive zone. So a good play to touch it up there. Cournoyer. Martin. The point. Sends it in. Englehart picks up the turnover. Walks in. He tries dropping it for Pelletier. Gets it to Arsenault. Poke checked away by Martin, who was, as Arsenal was just entering the zone, Martin stopped before anything could even happen. Just about 11 minutes left in this period. Time is ticking away here for Moncton to keep their season alive. Cornoye challenges to chase after him as Arsenal takes a tumble in behind the play. The Italian cuts in, fans on his shot. He was absolutely smothered by the defenders. They start the other way. Ashe. Down the left side, speeding in. One hand on his stick. He's going to have to go all the distance around the net. Sends it behind. Hua, knocked down. Can't get it out. Mercier keeps it in. Sear. Mercier with the big hit on Baudouin. Toner. Sear. Flips it ahead. Hua, in shot. Chest save by Gravel. Easy save by Gravel. Nowhere else that puck was going. It was a good read. That just keeps happening. He just positions himself in the perfect spot every time almost. But you got to give credit to this UQTR defensive core. They're making it possible to make it easier on Gravel to position himself because they're taking passing lanes away. Simon La France. Skates it out. Covered and dumps it in. Adam Mercier. Long pass to Couture. Alexandre Couture. Noel knocks it off the boards. Felix Lafrance. Frenette goes across. Simon Lafrance poked away from him by Jan Felix Lapointe. Well done there. Nine minutes to go in the third period. Kalen Gauthier, UQTR seems content to just let the clock tick away. Absolutely, just get pucks in deep. Four check, keep it in Moncton zone. And it'll be riding off into the semis, no problem. Noel, blast it, that miss is wide from near center ice. Had Adam on a quick reaction. Jacob, on the right side, his pass deflected away by Noel. Moulin hit into the boards. Pelletier battling for it with Moulin on the near side. At around the face off circle, Moulin sends it deep. Tourua lost it. And some words between the friends. Ah, I'm gonna call that a fight. <laughs> Punches were thrown. Punch was thrown. Yeah, I think what Wa is trying to do here is get under the skin of UQTR. So he's trying to antagonize and try and potentially get a call his way. But the referee is well aware of what's going on and sends them both to the box. Now, quick escalation from some words to uh, helmets off and punch almost being thrown. It's a mix of, you know, I'm trying to get you to take a bad penalty, but I'm really mad that we're down four goals, so I'm taking my anger out on you. So both of them will get called. Stick around. You do not want to miss the end of this. You are watching the University Men's Hockey Championship on CBC.
CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports women's volleyball teams battle for the 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship from McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. Catch the action exclusively on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC, chase the glory. And Moncton has to chase UQTR in this one. It's eight minutes to go, hoping it's not out of reach. Here we go. As we have four on four at the moment. Monroe Boucher, pass, raw, walks in, blocker saved by Olivier Adam. Got into the slot. Pelletier. He skates by, he tries dancing by the whole team, got by three, two of four players for turning it over. Monroe Boucher starts the other way at center ice. That's down the center and a shot from La France is turned aside with the blocker. La France chases it into the far corner. Still with it on the far boards before losing possession of it. Too much momentum for that puck. Nathaniel Roy turns, fires, save made with the blocker by Gravel. He's been so strong all night, all day. Exactly, he's been so strong. And I've been so impressed with the play of Moncton right now as a seventh seed. As we know, they got hot in the playoffs. But they just ran into a hot goaltender in Gravel. It's just unlucky for them. Behind the net, Frenette. No pun intended. Like we said, they're just content killing time. So if you can just stand behind the net and nothing happens, hey, all the power to you. Exactly. Rafano Mazantsoa turns it over. Lapointe tries getting it out, but Italian blocks it with his glove. That was six and a half to go. There's no reason for UQTR to take any chances. They'll make Moncton chase them for the rest of this game. Italian. Kaelin Gauthier across the center ice on the far side for getting inside the offensive zone before stopping and dumping it in. Nice work by Dumoulin. They were trying to ring it around the boards, but he blocked it with his stick. Now Gilbot. Gilbot. Avoids the hit from Cornoyer before being pinned by Ouellette. The Patriot have it again. Puck bounces up in the air. Lozon. Nice backdoor feed. Yvonne, his shot was deflected up high and out of play. Well, it hits the mesh. Boudreau can't believe it. He's arguing with that. Yeah, Boudreau can't believe it. It's CBC and CBC Sports, the home of university sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports women's hockey teams. They face off in the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship, presented by Connect Energy in Saskatoon. The action begins yesterday and continue began yesterday and continues tonight on CBC Gem, CBCSports.ca, the CBC Sports app, CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. I don't think that final line will ever escape my head after these nationals. CBC will forever be impl implemented into my brain. I think that's the goal. They've but, done their job well. <laughs> but Boudreau, unhappy that that puck was called, but his own teammates were raising their hands to the referee to say it was signaled out. He's telling the ref to chase the glory. <laughs> yep. Jacob. Dion, down the left wing, shot, paddled away by Gravel, five minutes to go, stick handling through and nearly getting a breakaway, it was Martin, now the other way, Drouin walks in, save made by Gravel, he was down the left side, Martin on the near side, avoids a hit, but I believe Arsenault just got a piece of him. They start the other way. Lapointe again. Jeremy Lapointe. Pad save. Loose puck. He couldn't get a shot off. Streaking in was Anglehart. You're absolutely right. Arsenault avoided a hit. 
because it looked like prime Larry Robinson was coming down with a hip check to take him out. Baudouin, Simon La France, chipped at by Roy. Roy picks up the turnover. Good feed. Tripping up and shooting it wide was Ache, I believe. La France clears it, trickles down the near side. Icing waved off as Toner reaches the puck before it crosses the goal line. Sear starts down the left side, shovels it towards the goal. That's blocked by Lozon. Loose puck. Ache nearly found their way around it, but it's going to be a penalty call against the Aigle Bleu. 3.40 to go in the third, and UQTR going on the power play. Yeah, Curtis, this two-minute penalty will take him down to about a minute 40 when it's said and done. Left in the game. Clearly not enough time potentially for Moncton to get back in this game as we take a look at the penalty. It's two minutes now, UQTR. You don't even have to shoot the puck, basically. You just got to move it around for these two minutes. Don't want to give any shorthanded opportunities to Moncton. Well, cleared away successfully. Boudreau takes it off, makes a man fall, is tangled up with LaFrance. Boudreau tries sending it behind the net, but that's picked off by Simon LaFrance. Pierre Olivier Roy takes it, crosses the ice, and Felix LaFrance just wires it in behind the net. Arsenault picked off, Felix LaFrance centering pass, looking back. Pierre Olivier Roy was looking for the cross ice to Simon LaFrance. It was picked off by Gilbault. Not sure what the goal was there. Too passive. Just shoot it on net or pass it back to your D-man. Maybe trying to kill time, I guess. Well, it doesn't kill time when you pass it to the other team and they go on an odd-man rush. Rafa Mazenso just dumps it in. Gilbo crosses the ice. His shot swatted away by Gravel. He didn't get a full grip on that one, though, so the puck was loose. Cornoyer crosses the blue line. Looking for Ouellette. Ends up going around the net. Lozon completely misses that. Drouin trying to get a streak down the middle. Drouin in! Cornoyer had him covered, and Drouin couldn't get a handle on the puck before he got to the net. Lozon stick handles the puck around for a bit. Rafanoma Zansoa finds Willette. Pass a little behind him. It's knocked away and Maverick Gauthier will get it back at center ice. Enters his defensive zone and just casually waiting, letting the clock be killed itself. Yeah, up five goals. This is all well said and done here for UQTR. They will advance to face the winner between the UBC Thunderbirds and McGill. And they have aspirations, Curtis, you know, to make it to that U Sports Finals and win a national championship since 2022. Baudouin turns, blocked. Penalty call with a minute to go, leaving the eyes for the season. Dennis Toner, Denny Toner, unless they may, can get four goals on shorthanded <laughs> in a minute. Can't even get four goals shorthanded. You score one, you're back to five on five. That's just PWHL. Yep. Face off one by Gilbo. Peltier clears it. Minute to go in the third. UQTR has got to be excited about a potential rematch with McGill or very nervous, one of the two. Well, uh, I don't think they're 
really wanting the guy. They don't really care who wins that matchup. They just got to be confident they could beat either team, whether it's UBC or McGill. You know, when this team is playing at their best, which, you know, Simon LaFrance has had five points, one of his best games, but we've seen better from UQTR in the regular season in the OUA. Gautier. But you got to give credit to Moncton, who played exceptionally well, even though they were down four goals. They have 34 shots on Gravel. Yeah, it's a game that where the score doesn't really do it justice to how the game was played. Gautier. To Maverick Gautier. Couture. Down the right side. Final seconds ticking down. And that will do it. It's the Université de Quebec à Trois-Rivières Patriot that win over the Aigle Bleu and secure themselves a spot in the semifinals for the third year in a row. Yeah, give credit to the Patriot, to Simon Lafrance, to Ravel. Everyone showed up today. Played a good game. I'm sure they know they can play better. But you got to give credit to Moncton. The Aigle Bleu. 34 shots. Just unlucky they ran into a goaltender with a 9.35 save percentage. Yeah. Well, UQTR probably pretty happy with the result. Simon Lafrance, obviously the player of the game for the Patriot. See, one B could be Ravel. For sure. And we get ready for the player of the game presentations. Handshake lineup, great tradition always. And yeah, Moncton a great second half of the season, especially in the playoffs. They got hot, their goaltender got hot. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports men's volleyball teams are in Kingston for this week's 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship. Catch the action exclusively tonight on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports on YouTube. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory, and that's exactly what the Patriot did tonight. Yes, Curtis. Chase the glory for the ninth time today. It was a dominant, not dominant, but on the score sheet, dominant performance. It'll scare other teams, I think, Absolutely. looking at the score. It will scare teams the way they see, if they see Gravel, the way he's played. I mean, if he plays like that, UQTR, they'll, they'll be able to beat any team that they face in this tournament. El Gravel showing why he is a former tournament MVP back in 2022 when they won it all. And... Moncton, it was first tournament appearance since 2012, so it was a very solid season for them. Absolutely, they loaded up, like you mentioned, in the summer. They wanted to make a run into the playoffs, and they finished second in the AUS. They go face UNB, arguably maybe the best team in new sports history, and they go and face them, and they only lose by two goals in each of the game, and we saw what UNB did against Rock, right? How powerful that offense is. And so they only lost by two. We take a look. Jeremy Lapointe, the player of the game for the Aigle Bleu with the goal tonight. Lone goal. What a rookie season it was for him. He's got a very bright future in youth sports. Gee, I wonder who will win it for the Patriots, Curtis. What a shocker. Simon LaFrance with five points tonight. Scoring on more points today than any other team had scored in this tournament so far. No other team. You said no other team has scored five goals, but for your team to score five goals and to have five points as well, you, you've been a factor on each goal. Every time you're touching the puck, most of the time, it is going in. You're making plays. So kudos to Simon Lafrance and the Patriots. 
Uh, what it was a great performance by the Patriots as they flip their sticks in triumph and live to see another day here at the University Men's Hockey Championships on CBC. It wasn't easy for them, but it is the Patriot. It was... <laughs> OK, and you have obtained a position in the semi-final. How are you going to prepare for this match? It's going to be a pour for today. We don't know our adversary yet, so we'll be on the floor for the next day. Thank you very much, congratulations and good luck. Pour toutes les dernières nouvelles de la Coupe U de U-Sport. And what a game it was for Simon La France there interviewing at the end of the game. You'll see him a lot in the highlights that we have coming up right now. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, Curtis, it was... Certainly a back and forth game. In the, if you want to talk about the pace of play, obviously UQTR and Patriots capitalizing more on their chances. But for them, Ravel and what he's done, they got outshot this game. You know, how many times do the Patriots really get outshot by opponents? Not often. So for them to get outshot by 11 shots goes to show that Moncton really brought their game, their A game. Played a really good game, but unfortunately, like I said, snake bitten by a hot goaltender, snake bitten by a superstar, the caliber type of player. And, you know, they have chances on the power play to make this game a lot closer. Unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize. And that will be the story of the game for Moncton because I thought their five on five play for a team, Curtis, that during the regular season was a minus nine goal differential. Differential, They really showed up tonight. Yeah, a lot of chances for both teams. And they were able, but it was the Patriots able to take the win. And great job. You mentioned earlier in the game the defense, creating opportunities where it became easy for Gravel. I mean, yeah, huge difference makers. Absolutely. You, you, you said it. I mean, Gravel, he made 33 stops in this game. But a lot of those shots, you know, were shots from the outside, point shots where his defense was able to clear the rebound or make sure there was no chance at scoring on the rebound. So you got to give credits to the Patriots defensive core who showed up big today. But man, Simon Lafrance will be, of course, the story of this match as he for sure made a presence and it was felt throughout the arena. Yeah, we take a look at the scoring summary, the first period. Three goals for UQTR, second period, three more goals. Not all for UQTR, but nothing in the third. A strong performance from the Patriot on paper. Yeah, strong performance from the brother that France is, where Felix and Simon, they both showed up. Felix scoring two goals, and Simon La France, just, we all know the type of game he had, so... You know, UQTR, they're moving on, going to face the UBC Thunderboards or McGill. That game should be good, but they're ready for whoever wins that game. I don't think they want to rematch with McGill. They don't really care who it is. They know they can, they believe in their heart they can beat any team in this tournament, and that's the mentality you got to have in the Nationals. You can't say, well, well, you know, hopefully we make it to the semis and finals, and hopefully we don't face this team. No, you got to believe that you can beat every single team that you will have to face in this tournament. And I think they believe they can. I mean, they just got outshot by 10, and they won 5-1. to one. If their stars are performing the way they did today, they will be in very good shape. Exactly. Like you said, they won 5-1, but I don't believe... I've watched their games. I don't think they played their best hockey tonight. And, and, and you know, I think when they do play their best hockey, you're going to see how dangerous this Patriot team can really be, especially when Gravel is playing the way he is. So, you know... Maybe we see it in the semis when they when they face either winner of UBC or McGill, but time will tell. But this team is certainly scary when they're playing at their best. Well, for Matthew Smith and the rest of our crew, you have just witnessed the Patriot with a big 5-1 win, and I am 
Curtis Coleman, and thanking you for joining us for U Sports on CBC. U Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat U Sport at Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada, Nike, just do it, Fedler. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des Championnats U Sport. 